Right. Welcome everyone to the Edible Schoolyard virtual summer training. It's so exciting to see you all here. Um, my name is Nick Lee. I am the program director for the Edible Schoolyard Stockton, and it's an honor to welcome you here today. Um, I want to say we have just under 1,000 people signed up from this event, um, and we are so grateful to have you all here. And really quickly, I'm just going to read off a list of the names of countries that people are calling in from. We're so thrilled to have folks coming from Australia, the Bahamas, Bahrain, Barbados, Bhutan, Brazil, Bulgaria, Canada, Chile, China, Colombia, Costa Rica, Cuba, the Dominican Republic, El Salvador, France, Germany, Greece, Guatemala, India, Ireland, Israel, Italy, Japan, Korea, Lebanon, Liberia, Malaysia, Malta, Mexico, New Zealand, Peru, Philippines, Portugal, Saudi Arabia, Singapore, South Africa, Spain, Sri Lanka, Switzerland, Trinidad and Tobago, Turkey, United Arab Emirates, United Kingdom, <laughs> and the United States. It is a honor to be here with all of you. And um, without further ado, I'm going to pass it on to our founder, and the visionary behind the Edible Schoolyard Project, Ms. Alice Waters. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. I was just so excited when I heard all of those countries because this is a universal idea. The idea that we would use our public education to teach the values that we are going to need to live on this planet together. It's so beautiful that it has spread in this way. We have 6,500 schools on our network. And one of these days, I'm just gonna take a trip and go visit all of them, <laughs> see what's happening. But the Edible Schoolyard here in Berkeley has been going for now 26 years. And I really feel incredibly confident that this is our future. And I see these thousand teenage kids, these are teenagers, sixth, seventh and eighth graders. They um, speak 22 different languages at home. And they have proven to me that when you teach an academic subject like math or science or history or even art and music, and you do it in a kitchen classroom or in a garden classroom, that they pay attention. They love to be in the kitchen. And I always say it takes no time at all for them when they grow it and they cook it, they all want to eat it. And maybe if they just grow it, 95% want to eat it. If they grew it and cooked it, all of them. And this means that, that the foods from around the world the foods from the places that you come from are the ones that are important for this program. To have that kind of diversity being taught so that when you're learning about the history of the Arabia Peninsula, you are eating hummus and pita bread and greens with garlic and it is a way that we are educating their senses, which is what has been missing in public education, particularly in this country. And our senses, smelling and tasting and touching, listening carefully and smelling, these are our pathways into our minds. And when you learn this way, you never forget. Montessori trained me. I wish she had trained me personally, but she was working 
at the end of the last century. And she wanted to know how to teach children that lived in very difficult circumstances in the slums of India and in Naples who were sensorily deprived. She wanted to know. And she discovered that learning by doing was the best way. And so I am thrilled to be looking into the future of this world and to know that we have this incredibly hopeful scenario that really I'm working now very much with school lunch and I wanna prove that we can serve organic wholesome food and address climate at the same time, that we can buy food from the people who really care about the land and the future of this planet. So it's my real pleasure to, to welcome you and uh, to have you um, participate in a collaborative way with this big vision of change. And uh, I guess I would just want to say that, thank you. Thank you for all coming. And I hope you learned something valuable and that you connect with us and tell us on the network. Thank you so much, Alice. Um, and welcome to so many of you. I understand we had some technical difficulties with Zoom and we have some folks still arriving. So again, welcome. Um, we have recorded this and you will be able to hear Alice's introductory message uh, in a recording again later. And I do apologize for the inconvenience. I forgot about my one idea that I needed to say. <laughs> that I'm working on school supported agriculture. So what if the schools actually took care of the farmers and like Chez Panisse, that they purchased the food directly without any middleman taking a cut? What if the schools did what we did and bought food at the real cost from the farmer, the rancher, the fisher, the baker. And that way, the values come right through the cafeteria door, like they did at Chez Panisse. And we made such friends. And we, we went out to the farm. The cooks went out to the farm. And the farmers came into the restaurant. And that is really that bond is what's going to really change our values. It's that when we fall in love with nature. And this way of thinking about it is like schools, community supported agriculture, but the schools could be that economic engine for a local economy. And we are trying to work with the University of California to change their procurement so that they can help us make a path for K through 12. So if you know any universities around the world that might wanna participate in this or any special people that are very articulate about regenerative organic agriculture, you know people, please let us know. Thank you, Nick, for allowing me to <laughs> say a few extra words. Thank you. It's, it's, it's such an important vision and just such a, a logical extension of the work of the Edible Schoolyard Project. Um, again, to all of those who are just joining us, uh, I am Nick Lee. I'm our program director for the Edible Schoolyard in Stockton. And we are just thrilled to have you here. And again, we apologize for any technical difficulties you've had. 
Um, what I want to do right now is actually take a second for everyone to get to say hello. Um, we have 150 people on this call right now, and I want to hear all of your voices, all of your energy in this space as well. So I've just clicked the button that will allow you to unmute yourself. And so go ahead and click that button and we'll start to hear the background noises and the sounds of all of your environments filtering into this virtual space. And then on the count of three, we're just gonna all yell out a big hello together. So again, go ahead and come off of mute so we can hear your voice. Come off of mute. Thank you, thank you for sharing your, your sound, your space with us. Um, again, we're so thrilled to be here with all of you. Um, with everybody who signed up for this series, uh, just about 1,000 educators, together, all of you represent over 1.8 million students. We asked each of you when you signed up to say how many students you work with, how many students you serve, how many students you connect to. And combined, we reach 1.8 million students, which is just an incredible, incredible reach. I am going to, let's see if I can mute everyone now, just so we don't have that echo. There we go. Um, so again, I think it's just so exciting uh, to have you all here and to recognize that we all come to this work for different reasons and many of us for the same reasons, but there are a multitude of reasons to be in the field of edible education, of teaching about food and helping youth connect to food. We can, as Alice talked about, support youth in learning academics through the kitchen and garden classes. They can be learning science in their garden class and they can connect their humanities subjects to their food that they are preparing in the kitchen. We can help joy, we can help youth find joy through learning to cook, learning to grow food and learning to nourish themselves. I think as educators, we all know that feeling of seeing a student do something that they didn't think that they were capable of. And that feeling of growth, that feeling of satisfaction, of accomplishment that we can support youth to find. Some of us are here because we really believe in connecting youth and families to healthy food and helping them on their journey towards nourishment and well being and towards building the health of themselves and their communities. And finally, Many of us are here because we believe that we can make the food system more just through our actions and through educating youth, that we can help youth learn about climate change, about recorded. inequitable access to food, and about unjust labor practices, and advocate for and change the food system to make a more just world. Regardless of why you're here, which of those reasons speak to you, we're all in this community of edible educators together. Um, here at the Edible Schoolyard, we've been doing this work for 27 years. Uh, Alice Waters, Principal Neil Smith, uh, started the Edible Schoolyard 27 years ago. And you'll have a chance to hear more about that history on Friday in a session with them and the founding chef teacher at the Edible Schoolyard, Ms. Esther Cook. Right now, our programs are focused in Berkeley with the Edible Schoolyard at King Middle School, where we reach 1,000 students. Uh, every student comes out to the garden and kitchen roughly 10 times a year for gardening and cooking lessons. We have a three-year-old program in Stockton, California in the Central Valley that's growing fast. We have a five and a half acre farm. We run a CSA program where we distribute produce at no cost to families in the community. And we have 32 community plots where individuals and families have 400 square feet that they pay nothing for and they get free water and supplies to grow their own food on. And finally, in Stockton, we're also hosting field trips for local South Stockton schools. And then the final arm of the Edible Schoolyard that you are all participants in is this international community of educators learning, developing their practices, sharing knowledge with one another, utilizing curriculum resources, and building this international movement towards farm to school at every school. We hope that this event will provide you with a couple of chances to learn from us and from one another and to build your practice and deepen your commitment to helping youth learn about food. I'm excited to pass it off to my colleague, uh, Russell Sturton, who was the lead on organizing this event. Um, so without further ado, Russell. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Nick. And welcome, everybody. It is a great honor to have everyone here. And as we enter into the virtual training, I wanted to offer an, 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 excuse me, an acknowledgement of the land. And we recognize that here in Berkeley, our program is located on Huchun territory, which is the unceded land of the Chichenyo speaking Ohlone people. We acknowledge the violent history of colonization. The fact that this land remains of great importance to the Mamwekma Ohlone tribe, that the practices of regenerative agriculture have their roots in indigenous land stewardship, and our responsibility as residents of this land to educate ourselves and to support the work of decolonization. And so at this moment in our session, I invite you all to post in the chat where you are coming from and whose land you are a resident of. And Nick will post a resource in the chat where everyone can learn more about the land that you're on. Thank you all so much. Well, let I acknowledge everyone for chatting in, for taking a look at the resource, and for sharing the indigenous land that you're a resident of today. As the chats keep coming in, I will be sharing now and proceeding with the agenda for today. And I'm so excited to welcome you all again and to share where we're going in this four days of virtual training. And to support with that, uh, we have a agenda to share. And so the screen will probably go on full screen for everyone as we pull up the agenda. Thank you so much, Nick. So here we are on Tuesday, the 21st. Happy solstice, everybody. And so we'll, we're here in our introductory session and we're so excited to take you on a, and to join you and to learn together over the four days of exploring what we see as some of the fundamental practices of edible education and hoping that this session and this virtual training supports everyone in growing your practice. And so to that end, later today at 3 p.m. Pacific time, we have a session on regenerative farming practices led by one of the lead farmers at Stone Barns Center in New, York, in New York. And then tomorrow we will be exploring garden classroom systems and structures with our garden team here. Following that, we'll have a session on exploring kitchen classroom systems and structures, again with our team here. And then later to conclude tomorrow, we'll be diving into fundraising practices and looking at strategies that can support the development and fundraising efforts for your program in a kitchen and garden setting. On uh, Thursday, we'll be exploring food memories and that will be led by our very own Esther Cook, who's been with the Edible Schoolyard Project with us since the very founding of our program. And then later that evening in Pacific time, we're excited to offer a family engagement and cooking class demonstration for, um, for everyone who can attend. And on Friday, the final day of the virtual training, we'll be having a session that looks at how to how to build one's program in collaboration with partners in the community. And then we'll have our closing session at 2 p.m. Pacific time where Alice will join us again and be in conversation with our founding principal, uh, Neil Smith, who collaborated closely with Alice to build the, our program site here at Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Middle School in Berkeley, California. So we're so excited for this virtual team. Um, so excited to be learning and collaborating with you all. And in terms of other uh, mechanics to have in terms of being able to actually get the most out of this training, um, we have the same Zoom link for every session of the training. And so if you can attend the session, it's the same Zoom link. So you'll be able to click on this same link out. And you'll be in the session. And each session will be followed by a feedback survey because we're very, very, very eager to learn from you what 
was your experience of the session and what we can do to better serve you, of course, in the future. And also just know what worked well and what really resonated for you as you attend our sessions here this week. And lastly, most of the sessions are going to be recorded. We are so celebrating that folks are joining us from all across the world. It is a great privilege and honor to get to have this opportunity to connect with you. And we also understand that this means that uh, many folks may not be able to join us for live for each of the sessions. And so given that, we are going to be recording most of the sessions and posting them to our site for public viewing later in the following weeks after this training. So we very much hope that you can join live. There's gonna be interactive elements to each session where you can post questions and get live responses from the facilitators. And we do wanna make as much as we can accessible following the training so that this can be an ongoing resource to help support your program's growth. So thank you so much for being here. We're so excited for this week and I'll pass it back to my colleague, Nick. Nick. Thanks, Russell. So for the remainder of our time in this opening session, we're gonna do an activity that we were calling grounding ourselves in the work. Um, if you were at last year's summer training, the virtual summer training last year, this is going to be very familiar. Um, we're beginning this with uh, an experience to help us provide a foundation of understanding as to why we do this work. Um, again, earlier I referenced some of the reasons, some of the different um, issues that folks might connect to more deeply, more personally. Uh, and we all bring our own reasons to, to be in this work. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a moment to pause and reflect. Uh, we're going to look back. We're going to look at the present. And we're going to look forward at our futures, too. Um, we want to acknowledge that many of us are in different places in our journeys of teaching. Some of you may be about to start your first year as a Food Corps member and be in your first experience as a teacher. Some of you may have been doing this for longer than we have. Some of you may be saying 27 years, ha, huh, I've been educating youth about food for 35 years um, and everything in between. And it's always good to take a moment to pause and reflect and look at the journey and consider where you've been, what keeps you motivated and where you want to go. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Before we dive into that, we're gonna take a brief moment for a little bit of breath work. And um, this is as much for me and Russell as it is for you all, since uh, we're, we're a little nervous here presenting, but excited to be here with all of you. Um, so what we're gonna do is a breathing exercise that's just a three count for a breath in, a three count as we pause and hold at the top of the breath, and then a three count to exhale. And we'll do that three times all the way through. So again, in, two, three, hold, two, three, exhale, two, three, in, hold, and exhale, in, hold, and exhale. Thanks everybody. And now for this next portion, I invite everyone to take a moment and see if you can find just a piece of paper or a notebook and a writing device. And the rest of this, um, uh, for the following parts of this um, reflection exercise, having a piece of paper, a writing device can be helpful if you don't have access to one, certainly encourage you to pull up a Word doc. Um, but also uh, take a second to just like move your body, move any move your body in a way that feels supportive and find yourself in a state where you can drop in to reflect on your um, on the following prompts here. Okay. So once you have your piece of paper and a pen, you're going to draw a big triangle in the center of it. And I'm going to give you a image of that, of what that looks like. It's very simple. 
but you're going to draw a big old triangle that takes up the whole page. And then you're gonna kind of divide it into three uh, rows. And you're gonna label those rows. The, the top, the, the pyramid on top is gonna to be the goals and aspirations. That middle layer is going to be your current motivation. And then down at the bottom, you're gonna write original inspiration. So again, it's a very simple graphic. Um, and I think you've all gotten that picture there. And now what we're gonna do is actually take some time for a little bit of journaling and just to think about that original inspiration. Um, and what we're gonna do is encourage everyone to turn their cameras off. We're gonna put on some music and you're gonna take about five minutes. Let me show that again. Yep, sure thing. I'll leave that up for a few more minutes. Um, so what we're gonna do is just take about five minutes to journal and really think back to what inspired you to begin teaching about food or to use food as a learning tool in your classroom. Uh, what caused you to, to use food as a tool for learning? Um, what about food was it that you wanted to teach? Who do you serve? What youth do you work with? Um, how do they motivate you? Did they ask to learn about food? Just think about all those questions and just reconnect to why it is that you initially got started with teaching about food. So again, just taking about five minutes to journal to yourself. Um, I know it can seem like a little bit of a silly prompt because you've got so many reasons why you do this work now, but what was it originally? Maybe it's different than why you stay in this work now. Um, and again, I'll encourage everyone to turn their cameras off. Uh, I think we will do the same and we will put on some music so you can enjoy a little bit of time as you journal. If you have any questions, throw them in the chat. Hey, and welcome back. Um, I'm, I'm wishing that we could ask every, all 170 people here in this room today, what, what their answer was for that. Um, and I know you spent quite a few minutes with that question and I'd love to hear what came up for you. If you could pop something in the chat, just a quick summary of what you were thinking about, of what your original inspiration and motivation was for working in food and in education. Just pop a quick response in there. Ranjana says, youth is the future and educate, educating them about healthy food choices will help future generations thrive. Faith writes, Alice Waters. <laughs> Monitoring the lunchroom and seeing fresh produce go into the trash. Thanks for that, Sally. Working in service to kids in the planet, simply being outside more connection to land, somebody writing about their family as inspiration, saving the bees, the butterflies, and the bugs, Bronx Green Machine getting a shout out as inspiration, Green Gorillas NY getting a shout out, teaching stewardship of the planet, food as a basic human right, Farmer Jesse calling in, growing up on a farm, and then learning how few people get to grow up with that connection to food and land. Thanks for that, Jesse. Mm. Joan writing about food-related traditions in a Jewish preschool. Wonderful. Paula writing about wanting to improve the community. Amazing. Food future security, mental health. Thank you for that, Kara. Amazing. It's, it's so incredible to see everything that you all are contributing here. Um, there's so many reasons why we are here on this call today, why we are spending our time working with youth and teaching about food. Um, Russell, do you want to take us into the next prompt? Sounds great. Thanks, Nick. 
So thank you so much, everyone, for exploring that, for sharing here in the chat with us and everybody here. And so moving up the triangle, exploring what is our current motivation with our work. And so some guiding prompts to support this exploration. What currently brings you joy and satisfaction within this work? What keeps you connected to this work? And what was a recent win that you are celebrating in your practice? So exploring again, our current motivation, perhaps many of us have been practicing edible education and serving youth and folks of all ages for a long time now. And so looking at what currently keeps us connected, what is the, what are, what are the elements of the work that bring you joy and satisfaction today? What keeps you connected to the work? And what is a win that you are celebrating? So taking some time to individually journal again, I'm seeing some folks are popping in the chat right now. Thanks so much for sharing that. And so once again, we'll actually take a few minutes, like take four minutes to uh, return to the journal prompt individually. You can feel free to go off camera again so that you can feel you have some of your base. And so we'll take some time to reflect on these questions and then we'll come back in four minutes. Awesome. Thanks so much. And thanks so much, everybody, for exploring that. And like the previous prompt, would, and of course, folks are already popping in the chat, but please continue to pop in the chat and I'll read off a few as they come in. Um, seeing Danielle say, seeing how excited kids and my community get about growing plants, gardening, and making my community more resilient. Um, students trying kale for the first time and asking for more to share with children what real food can taste like and do for their bodies. Learning something new every day is a big win and I love that it's about food today. Awesome. So many great motivations and wins here. When an adult tells me that they see a difference in their child at home. Sharing joy and the miracle of nature with children, being in service to the planet and the future generations, health and well-being. Created Dirt Girls After School Garden Club. 32 participants, awesome. Recent money is to do something on our new preschool home, changing the blacktop into something better. Win, or win is boy's mom has cancer. He was withdrawn, but lit up when I asked if he to learn to cook for his mom. That's really beautiful. To renew the school garden, to give kids a chance to connect with growing, eating what they grow, outdoor education, and so many more here. It's, it, if, we could, if only we could stay on and I could read out each one, but I hope everyone's getting a chance to learn, like look at the chat as well and read and celebrate everyone's current motivations and the current wins that keep us connected to this work. Again, many of us have been in this work for years and years, certainly longer than even I have, of course, like, and so acknowledge you all for the work you've been doing. And so thank you all for sharing here. And I'll pass it back to Nick. Thanks, Russell. And what we'll actually do now is we will get a chance to share a little bit more closely. We're going to go into breakout rooms. And so since we can't have all 180 people share in this format, all 180 people here are going to get to share in a closer, smaller stage. So you'll get a prompt in just a second that will invite you to join a breakout room. Um, go ahead and click the blue button that should say join now, and you'll get put into a room with three to four other people where you'll have a chance to introduce yourself, um, share your name, uh, where you are calling in from, and then go ahead and share that, that win or that joy or that current inspiration that you're feeling uh, with one another in that call. We'll have about um, six to eight minutes in that. So you should have between 90 seconds and two minutes per person. So you can share a, a quick story, uh, but not the long version. Um, and if you're not comfortable joining a breakout conversation or having that conversation, that's okay. You can stay in the main room and just leave your camera and mic off and we'll pick back up in just about eight minutes. But we encourage you to join and, and chat with some, some of your peers here.
All right, we'll launch those rooms now. Okay, welcome back from your breakout rooms, everyone. Looks like we've got most everyone back here. Um, thank you for sharing with one another. And I hope you got to hear some really interesting stories and connect to some other people with motivation and joy and think about how that might connect to your work as well. Um, for this next question, the, the last question of this kind of reflection triangle where we started with our inspiration, we just connected to our current motivation is we're gonna look forward. We're gonna to look to the future, to our goals and our aspirations and think about what we still want to accomplish, what we still want to do, uh, what kind of outcomes we wanna have for the youth that we work with. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use a, um, a platform called Padlet. Uh, and Padlet is a, um, basically a giant bulletin board that we can all type on at once. And it sounds kind of chaotic and it is a good kind of chaos, but you can click on that link that I just put in the chat um, for Padlet and you'll open that up and you'll see a number of prompts across the top. And what you can do is you can start to add to that. You'll click the plus button just beneath each of those questions. It's awesome. I can see everyone landing in the Padlet. The number just keeps going up of how many people are on there. And you can start to type in your answers. So, you know, what do you want to change about the food system? What do you dream of for your students? How do you want to grow in this field? And just start to answer those questions on that Padlet. And we'll be able to watch everyone's answers populate and see those in real time. I know I'm going to spend some more time with that document after we, we wrap up this call, just because it is, it's so inspiring to see those goals, those aspirations of, of everyone here on this call and how they reflect the, the goals and aspirations of um, so many educators from across the country and around the world. And these hopes, these dreams for these students is such a powerful stream of, of thoughts there. And if we can realize those, the, the world will be in such a better place. So again, thank you for contributing all of those. And again, spend a little bit more time with that, read through that. It is a powerful, powerful document and vision for the change that we can make. Um, I, I hope that this was a, an interesting little reflection process for you, just to think back on what got you into this work what keeps you motivated in it and where you still want to go. Um, this opening session was designed just to offer a little bit of inspiration, reconnect you with your motivation and get us ready for the rest of this week and the events that we're offering. Uh, again, you heard from Russell at the beginning of the session about the other sessions that are coming up later today. And um, for the rest of the week, Erica, thank you for that question. Uh, is that form available for you to play with ongoing or make your own? You can continue to use this Padlet. It will be live. That will be online and available. You can come back to it and look at it. Uh, that URL won't go away. Um, if you want to make your own Padlets, use that as a teaching tool with kids. Uh, highly recommend it. Just go to padlet.com and create your own account and you can make similar forms and use them in similar ways yourself. Um, Again, Russell, if you could share the, actually I can share the file of the calendar for the rest of the week. Um, later today at 3 p.m. in just about 55 minutes, we're gonna have a session with Jack Algieri, who's the head farmer at the Stone Barn Center in New York. And he'll be talking about regenerative farming practices and how they can apply to school gardens, small farms, and how you can tie regenerative organic practices into your teaching, help our youth learn about ways to, to steward the earth while providing food. Um, oh, June 22, eight, thanks for that question. Um, the ask, oh, Russell, are you seeing that question? 
Yeah. Yes. Sorry about that. Um, oh, let me check on that to confirm. Yeah, so just really quickly running through the schedule for the rest of the week. We have this regenerative farming practices this afternoon at 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Tomorrow morning, our kitchen team at the Edible Schoolyard Berkeley is going to lead a session uh, at 10 a.m. Or I'm sorry, the garden team is going to lead a session at 10 a.m. on exploring garden classroom structures and systems, thinking about ways of organizing your garden classroom uh, to make it a more effective learning space. In the afternoon, our Edible Schoolyard Berkeley kitchen team is going to lead a session on exploring kitchen classrooms, systems, and structures. Later in that afternoon, um, at either 3 or 3.30, we're coming back to you with a firm answer on that, we'll have a session on fundraising, uh, making the ask effective strategies for fundraising for school gardens and kitchens. Thursday, we will start with a session at 10 a.m. called Exploring Student Engagement. Uh, that's gonna be led by Raquel V. Heel, who's our Senior Curriculum Manager. And she is going to lead you through a workbook that she recently published that is for educators working with food and encouraging you to think about curriculum design and how you can make your lessons more engaging and student-centered. Uh, later that afternoon, 1 p.m. on Thursday, uh, Esther Cook of the Berkeley Kitchen team is going to lead a session on food memories, on writing food memories and sharing food memories and what a um, joyful and engaging practice that can be with students. Later that evening, Thursday evening uh, at 4.30 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, we'll have a family engagement and cooking class demonstration led by Griselda Cooney, uh, the um, family engagement manager for the Edible Schoolyard Berkeley. And then finally, on Friday, uh, Chef Leisha Barnett from our Edible Schoolyard Stockton team will lead a session on program development with community partners and ways of building your program through partnerships with local community organizations. And then finally, to close us out Friday at 2 p.m., we'll have that conversation with Alice Waters, Neil Smith, the founding principal at um, the Edible Schoolyard Berkeley. And our senior chef teacher, Esther Cook, uh, will be facilitating that conversation with them as they walk you through a more detailed history of the Edible Schoolyard and some of the lessons learned in the early years of building this program. Um, is there a list that shows all of the sessions? Yes, I will share that with you one more time. And then I think we are close to wrapping up this session. Um, Russell, are there any words you wanted to say as I get this last screen share up and as we bring this to a close? Thank you so much, Nick. And just in terms of uh, scheduling, um, that making the ask session is at 3.30 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow. And as Nick said, we'll send out that schedule again. And thank you all. I'll just, uh, all I have to say is like, thank you and gratitude to everyone here for the work you do and for being here um, and we look forward to learning together over the course of this week and beyond. Thanks. Wonderful. And what we'll do since that visual calendar does have a the three o'clock time versus the 3.30 time on it is we'll get that revised and we'll send that out via an email. So everyone will get an email later today that will have that visual calendar for you, the Zoom link. And again, to anyone who had technical difficulties joining earlier today, we have taken care of that issue and you will not have that problem tomorrow or later today. So apologies for that. And we hope to see you at 3 p.m. Uh, in just about 50 minutes for our session on regenerative farming practices with Jack Algier.